All right. 13 love, 13 knowledge, 13 wisdom, 13 respect. This is your creation 13. Uh, today we're going to be talking about and looking at as best we can the origins of the word God um, as well as looking at uh, the origin of pagan and the word in general right the word it's important to really look at the definitions and origins of words because people have come so accustomed to words that they've created idols of these words right they've created idols and have totally forgotten the foundations that were laid in place right um, it's so important to realize that the ancient ways has talked about a lot the ancient ways and what are the ancient ways right is it reading a book following the laws and rules of the books and traditions and cultures or has it always just been about nature getting out into nature uh, um, living by the four seasons knowing how to take care of the earth because if you're not taking care of the earth humanity will perish humanity will fall away and that was the basic instructions for humanity right from the creators was to take care of the land take care of the waters and that hasn't happened because of words because of words so we're gonna get right into this because man this could be long we'll see what happens so let me go ahead and switch this over and we'll be good all right so we're going to begin with 1 Corinthians 10.13. There is no temptation that has consumed you more than the programs of humanity and the ancient spirits that live on the lands, water, and the ether slash air. But the creator, creators, God is faithful, the faithful spirit, who will not allow you to suffer under the spirit of suffering. You will not be tempted from spirits that you can't cast out. All spirits can be released out of you and the contracts voided out. That's very important. You will not be tempted from spirits that you can't cast out. You can cast out spirits, right? There's nothing that stops you from that, right? Um... Throughout the temptation spirits, there is always a way to get them out of your body. It is a battle when spirits tempt you, but the temptation will never consume you unless if you allow those spirits to consume your life. Right? We allow these spirits to consume us because these spirits whisper in our ears. They whisper. They hiss. Right? Um, that's the root word for snake is hiss right it's a hissing sound it's a whispering sound that is trying to tempt you and consume you just like what Satan tried to do with Christ Satan would give him these messages or words and then Christ would say ah don't think so get behind me get behind me right I'm not going to allow a spirit or entity to consume me or be in front of me, right? It's important to understand what that means, that no spirit can consume you unless if you allow it. And man, you know, those words, those hissing words, those whispering words can get you. Um, Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing as under of soul and spirits. Piercing even to the dividing as under of soul and spirits, and of the joints and marrow. Oh, man. And the root word for marrow is mu, muat, and lamiria. So, you can look those up. Very interesting. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of 
the heart, right? There is a spirit that divides us and it, it does not allow you to know your true intentions, but these spirits will present their intentions instead of your own, right? Through thoughts and intents of the heart. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and just like we did with the last one, uh, you can put that in there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with whatever name, God creator and the word was God creator logos logos is the Greek word for word reason or plane in ancient Greek philosophy and early Christian theology all businesses have logos we can even look at word at the word word that it can mean vibrations and frequencies this is interesting so in the beginning was a word or in the beginning was the reason and the reason was with the God or creator and the reason was with God and creator. Again, in the beginning was the plan and the plan was with God and the creator and the plan was with God and the creator or in the beginning was the vibration or in the beginning was a frequency that, that turns things around in a way from what we were taught right I was born and raised in a Christian home and I was taught that the word meant a book that the word was a book but if you turn it back into what it is a logo a business logo it's also an image right an idol that we're told not to worship no idols. So in the beginning was the reason. Or in the beginning was a plan. And the plan or the reason was with the creator. And the plan and the reason was the creator. That changes things. Right? That changes things. So how would you call a book a reason? And how would you call a book a plan? Right? Uh, a plan book maybe right a book of reasons absolutely a book of reasons because that's what we're discussing here many reasons to find answers many reasons to have questions very interesting let's continue on um, the English word God comes from the old English God which itself is derived from the proto-germanic uh, Gudan and I might be saying that wrong it cognates in other German language include Gab, Gadis, both Gothic, Gua, I'm sure I'm saying these wrong, in Norse mythology is God, Old Saxon, French, and Dutch is Gott, um, and Gott is Old High German. So it's, it's very interesting how we have all these different words, Gudan, Gab, uh, Gudas, Guo, and God, right? And how it turned into that traditionally, we'll find out here in a second. That's a little long, so I'm going to try to read this as quick as I can. So the Proto-Germanic meaning of Gudin and its etymology is uncertain. Always look for that keyword uncertain. There they have an answer but they're trying to keep it a mystery it is generally agreed that it derives from the Europeans uh, nature passive perfect part whatever that word is man gutam gutam this form within late European itself as possibly and thought to derive from a root giu which means to pour or Libate. The idea survives in the Dutch word giet, meaning to pour. And Sanskrit, huta, I'm sure I'm butchering these, are from a root gia, um, which basically means to call or to invoke. This is what we talked about in the previous um, presentation. To call or to invoke. This gets interesting. It also means uh, Sanskrit huta, 
having been sacrificed from the verb root who means sacrifice but a slight shift in translation gives a meaning one to whom sacrifices are made one to whom sacrifices are made depending on which possibility is preferred to pre Christian meaning of the Germanic term may, may either have been in the pouring case or the libation or that which is libated upon in idol or as Witkin opens man these words are weird in the light of Greek means poured earth meaning tumulus the Germanic form may have referred in the first instance to the spirit imminent in burial mound or in the invoke case invocation prayer slash magic spells compare the meaning of Sanskrit Brahman or that which is invoked <laughs> this blew my mind uh, and basically what we're looking at here is to invoke, to call one to whom sacrifices are made, invocation, that which is invoked, right? Um, this is why I put the little signs here because in the beginning was the word or the reason what is the reason you write the word there and that reason was with write the reason down with the help of the Creator and the reason was and you put your answer there with God and the Creator this is the process of invoking this is the process of um, what are you what are you what are you sacrificing or what are you um, exchanging what are you exchanging right say my phone for example would be like all right I'm gonna put my phone down here as my sacrifice or in exchange for what you're invoking what are you presenting uh, excuse me what is your prayer what is your spell it's all the same thing, right? Oh, no, it's not. It is. It's the root words right here. Very, very fascinating. Gudan. Gudan was before the word God. Gudan. Um, I think that's what we talk about next. Let's check it out. So I found that interesting. So key things here, again, invoke, invocation, one to whom sacrifices are made. And sacrifices, again, is a product of exchange. How things became a literal sacrifice of, of humans, I don't know. But it is a product of exchange. I guess people probably just went the extreme route because they weren't seeing or remembering how invoking occurred, the product of exchange, and how to properly do spells slash prayers right I really feel that's what happened so Gudan was shortened to God over time and was adopted slash retained by the Germanic people of the British as the name of their deity in Liu again I'm probably butchering these names of the Latin word Deus or Zeus it sounds like Zeus doesn't it used by the Latin speaking Christian church after conversion to Christianity Latin word deuce I'm gonna say that's what that was Zeus because if you look up these root words man they go they go back they go far back so they just change the word to deuce um, just to create something different right God entered English when the language still had a system of grammatical gender the word and its cognates were initially nadir but underwent transition when their speakers converted to Christianity as a means of distinguishing 
keyword distinguishing the personal God of the Christians from the impersonal divine powers acknowledged by pagans. This is huge and the main problem with religion today, as it states here. They underwent transition when their speakers converted to Christianity as a means of distinguishing the personal God of the Christians. So they used a title, Christian, to distinguish a creator as their own, right? As their own. And this is why we have so much dividing, because they have created a product of their own agenda that is away from nature that is away from its original format that's is the start of it right here it's very fascinating everything is like stem from the germans you look up history um a lot of it is from germany which is very interesting godnitz cognitz likelihood a general uh predominantly plural i'm butchering this man our collective sense prior to conversion to Christianity. After conversion, the word was commonly used in the singular to refer to the Christian deity and also took on characteristics of the name. The word God was used to represent Greek theos. So if you look up these root words, it's theos and Latin dios in Bible. Still saying it's Zeus, man. Translations. First in the Gothic translation of the New Testament. I don't even know what that word is. For the etymology of Deus. Uh, Greek for Theos means God in English. And, you know, it would actually go back to Gudan, right? So, God is an English word. So, it is a later word. Right? It is not of origin of Hebrew. Hebrew would be Elohim. It's often connected with Greek Theo, which means to run. And uh, Theorio, I'm sure I said that wrong, to look at, to see, or to observe. From the Latin holidays, Phanom is temple. And also, Aramean, which means Daik, which I don't know what that means, uh, which just means God. Alternative suggestions connect Dios to smoke and spirits, which is very interesting. It also connects with the hissing sound, right? A whispering sound. Smoke, mist, spirits. Attested in Beltic and Germanic words for spook. And ultimately cognate with Latin fumos, which means smoke. The earliest attested form of the word in Greek is teo for plural. So, and again, we get some interesting root words here, right? Um, we get running. We get to look at, to see, or to observe. Um, but the interesting one is smoke and spirits. Right? To spook, spirit, smoke, a deity, theos. Right? Um, we're looking at an invisible uh, thing. Right? A mist. Uh, something that will take over or consume you. A deity that presents itself. This gets into some weird territories because, you know, I was always taught... God was a creator, and even I was reading in Genesis, getting a root word for Eve, and uh, again, uh, it said God was uh, um, uh, walking, and uh, the definition or the root word there was uh, wind, a mist, um, it's a spirit, a source. This is huge, right? Um, because we're mingling with spirits. We're mingling with entities. 
So what does this mean? What are we, what are we conjuring with? What are we playing with? What are we um, invoking within our lives? Right, the intentions. It's huge. Hopefully, you guys are following me on this um, as we go for it. So, what is a pagan? This caught my attention. The word pagan comes from the Latin paganus, which means, which meant country dweller. Simple enough, a country dweller. But today we usually use it in reference to someone who follows a nature-based poly, whatever that word is, spiritual path. Some people in the pagan community practice as part of an established tradition or belief system by many practices as uh, excuse me, a solitarius. I'm sure I said that wrong. Country dweller or country traditions and customs is a correct way to express different religions or spiritual selective doctrines and spiritual practices. Let me say that again. So instead of, of saying everything is pagan, right, in the Christian community especially, but in religion in general, the word pagan is demonize but at the end of the day take away that word it's just a country dweller it's like oh okay you're part of a country you're part of a tradition you're part of a custom that's it that's all it is it's a tradition and custom and that's the way we should be saying that in a correct way uh, to express different religious and spiritual selective doctrines and spiritual practices right to be respectful of where people are at right the use of the word pagan has created a negative and dividing state through the whole world and that's truth right that's truth because people are trying to identify what they feel is is the truth right what they feel is the truth um you know i've even been guilty of that uh as i grew up you know of distinguishing what is truth um, and what is false but in reality you learn that they're programs that either limit you for a lack of knowledge and wisdom or you can look at things like we're doing here look up the roots of these things identify them for what they are their original attention is um and go from there again we're looking at spirits we're looking at invoking we're looking at prayers slash spells we're conjuring with spirits with mists it gets really interesting really interesting um that is root origin of god and pagan it is of german and dutch origin words have become idols and religions spiritual and religious leaders don't question the roots of the doctrine they teach or even understand what they are teaching. Again, spiritual and religious leaders don't question the roots of the doctrine they teach or even understand what they are teaching. A lot of people don't know. They don't know what they teach. They're just, they're just like, here's the Bible. This is how you need to teach it. And that's it. That's what you see a lot of religious leaders do is they say this is it don't question it this is it don't look at the root words no no you can't make it complicated you gotta just keep at the old traditions of our grand grandparents our great grandparents etc etc why is this information important it's important to understand what you believe in it's important to understand what you feel truth is it's important to understand what you feel false is what and it's important to understand why root words are important how the dividing happened in the religious realm right spirituality is different because it is of nature based because you're getting back to the spirit of things right you're learning what the mist is. You're learning what invoking means. You're learning what what the do's and don'ts in your invoking process, in your praying process, in your sacrificing process 
which in turn is the product of exchange. You're learning how to exchange with spirits, right? Because in our mind, we thought, hey, God is, is a deity that has characteristics but as a whole, you look up these root words, it's a mist, it's it's something, it's something totally different. Um, I believe in whatever I choose to believe, right? I believe in whatever I choose to believe. We're going to look up the root word for this, right? So many people tell me, tell me this, I believe in whatever I choose to believe. Well, what is belief, Right? Belief means to accept something as a truth to you, feel sure of the truth of, similar, be convinced by trust, have confidence, in, consider, honest, or the opposite, disbelief, to hold on to something as an opinion, think, or I suppose, right, or I suppose, I believe we've already met, right? Um, break up the word belief or believe and you get be, lie, and Eve, right? Be, lies, Eve. So be means to exist, live, take place, happen. Not to be, not to be confused with be, as an insect, as a bumblebee or a honeybee. But is it really, right? Because the bees teach us how to live and the bees teach us how to exist. If it wasn't for them bees, man, we wouldn't have life. Bees pollinate everything to make things grow, right? So it's the same thing, it's the same thing, a lie. A false statement deliberately presented as being truth. A falsehood. Something meant to deceive or mistakenly be accepted as truth. Also, we got the word lie, lane, lying, lies. To be or place oneself at rest in a flat, horizontal, or recumbent, whatever that word is, position. Recline, hey, he laid under a tree to sleep. To be placed on or supported by a surface that is usually horizontal, and so on and so forth. Be lies, right? You know, um, you'd want to be in a place that is a false statement, right? You want to know the truth, right? How can we distinguish, how can we identify if something is false, if we're being lied to, right? We got to move past the beliefs, we got to move pass the lies and find out the real truth don't accept things for what people tell you right um a lot of people say that uh that uh humans are limited in their mindsets or humans have uh uh a nature of them right um i was in a conversation yesterday and that uh, we view animals and the instincts of animals. Do we have those same instincts? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say the mist, the spirits, the invoking reprograms us and gives us ideas. And we either choose to allow those ideas to manifest or we don't. That's key. That's key. So, again, if you believe in something, it more likely is a false statement until you find out the truth, right? And the stages. You're going to go into the belief structure because you don't know if it's real or true, but you have to move to the next step, which is faith. Faith is a different thing. All right, so Eve can mean the evening or day before some special event or festival like New Year's Eve. Um, Hebrew meaning for Eve is a life giver or breath, which is interesting, right? So believe ends with Eve, which means the breath, 
the giver of life. We're invoking, right? We're invoking. We're giving life. We are um, exchanging, the product of exchanging. Oh, man. And this could get into so many different conversations. All right. So the conclusion to all this is simply humans give value, false authority, and idol worshiping to names and titles. This is trickery, blind belief. We just talked about beliefs or believe. Um, a lack of knowledge, wisdom, and research from a simple dictionary of root words. Humans have been taught not to question a doctrine and its rules and the leaders that create these doctrines and rules within the doctrines. Knowing the root word for God means to call, invoke, pray, magic spell, and to pour or to draw out spirits. Very fascinating. Again, knowing the root word for God means to call, invoke, pray, magic spell, and to pour or draw out spirits. Right? Again, we do not want to allow spirits to take control over us. As we were talking about in... In 1 Corinthians 10.13. Again. Um, but the creator. God is faithful. The faithful spirit. Who will not allow you to suffer. Under the spirit of suffering. You will not be tempted from the spirits. That you can't cast out. You can cast out all spirits. Right. Um, there's nothing that's stopping you from that. All spirits can be released out of you. And the contracts avoided out. Through all the temptation spirits. Temptating temptation spirits. There's always a way to get them out of your body. It is a battle when spirits tempt you. But the temptation will never consume you. Unless if you allow the spirits to consume you. And it's very important to, to realize that. Right? To realize what we're doing how we're doing it in our religious and spiritual practices. We are calling, right? Oh God, please help me. Or oh Christ, please help me. Right? We are calling. We're bringing forth a spirit, right? We're bringing forth spirits. It's nothing to be scared about. We're learning, learning what has not been taught by our previous leaders and current leaders of the religious realms and of the spiritual realms, right? This is all in the Bible. <laughs> it, it blows my mind, but it, it makes a lot of sense, you know, to call, to invoke, to pray, magic spells, to pour or draw out spirits. <sighs> blows my mind, man. Blows my mind. Every culture and tradition should have rules and laws. Real talk. As long as the rules and laws have good morals, good values, and train people to be strong, creative, respectable, and self-sufficient. Basically, teach and create a beautiful and balanced person, right? Which I hope everybody is doing, right? It's doing with their children. And it's a, it's a battle. Being a parent. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. Um, but if you can teach them the basics to be respectable, self-sufficient, be creative, right? Uh, teach them to be beautiful and a balanced person. You're good to go. Never be lawless or rebellious. Key words. Never be lawless or rebellious. Um, and that's what a lot of... Uh, religion teaches people is to be rebellious oh you can only go by this doctrine but you can't do anything else it causes a rebellious spirit because you're so limited to what you're being taught you can't think outside that box that book it's going to create that rebellious spirit and it will make you lawless because you're confused you're confused because you don't know what to what to listen to or what to believe in, right? 
it creates that state of lawlessness because of a lack of how these religious leaders and spiritual leaders have been teaching the people. They've taught people to be rebellious and lawless. Whew, it's crazy. Well, you know, I can believe in whatever I want to believe. Or, oh, I can do whatever I want to do because it's my body. Right? Man, the lawless, rebellious spirits. They're stubborn. They're stubborn. These spirits are stubborn. And the people who own their body have allowed these spirits to take, take them over. Oh yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah, I can do that. Man, you can't you can't talk to those beings. You can't talk to the spirits that's taken over when they have that state of lawlessness and rebelliousness. And yes, you can make decisions and choices, but be mindful of every choice and decision. Right? You don't want to be lawless or rebellious. Be mindful. Think before you say something. Um Study your choice and decision. Don't just do it on the spot. Study your choice and study your decision. Study your beliefs and study your faith to, to get a conclusion out of what you're, you're um, discovering, right? Um, what, is, what is the results going to be, right? Most humans have created an image or idol, a logos, right? That's what that definition is, logos. Most humans have created an image idol of themselves as being limited, disgusting. That's something that I've heard a lot of people talk about themselves. They think they're disgusting, and I'm. that's sad. It just blows my mind. Uh, a failure and dumb state of being. People view themselves as that. They see their physical body, and they say, and look at themselves as an idol, an image. And they tell themselves that they're limited, they're disgusting, they're a failure, and they're a dumb state of being. And people believe that, right? In 2000, <laughs> 2000, that's when the dumb state of being, the program of that, was presented to the American audience, right? Was presented to the United States audience. Dumb state of being. You are a sovereign creator at the end of the day. Self-learn how to be one. Self-learn how to be one. Right? Um, to be a sovereign being is to go back to the ancient ways. Right? Get back out into nature. Learn how nature works. Not how the animals work. Right? Because people will observe the animals... And say, oh, look, it's it's kill or be killed. It's dominate uh, these lands or control things. So you don't get mauled to death, right? Um, that's not what we're looking at in nature. What we're looking at in nature is how things grow. How plants grow, right? The importance of the bees. How the bees pollinate everything. To grow. To grow. Um, studying the wind. The mist. The spirits outside. Looking up at the sky. And the clouds. The sun. Looking at the night sky. With the stars. The moon. The cycles of the moon. Whew, man. Constellations in the, in the sky. The zodiacs. Um. Again, a different kind of mist, spirits that dwell in the night. That's what we're looking at. All right, we're creators, right? Goes back into again. Um, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, there was a reason. In the beginning, there was a plan. What is that reason? What was that plan? What was that plan? Right. That plan was creation, right? Not destruction, not views, not opinions, <laughs> not religion, not spirituality. Man, it was just it's nature. The plan was creation. Simple enough. The plan was creating. 
and the job for a human, a body, a person that harnesses a soul or many souls was to take care of the land, right? Was to to plant, to get ready for the four seasons, right? Otherwise, you'll experience death. You'll go into winter and starve to death. You'll die, right? You know, if you didn't have a grocery store, what would happen? You'd die. You'd die. You'd be consumed. You'd become an animal. And that can't be, right? The simple plan, taking care of the waters, taking care of the land, taking care of people. You know, that's what's happened with this root word God has divided so many people into that state of rebelliousness into that state of of again it went through a transitional stage to Christianity as a means of distinguishing a personal God distinguishing and keeping you away from the plan the reason, right? The reason for creation. Man. So I'm going to go ahead and end it on that. <laughs> that. You know, it's it's just so important to understand these reasons and these plans. Right? Um, it's just uncanny how we've all been deceived at the end of the day because of these root words. Because they're not questioning our leaders, our religious leaders, our spiritual leaders, our leaders that run the countries, that run the world. Everything's been divided because of idols, of logos. Flags are logos, right? Flags are logos. Flags are idols, right? I'm an American. I'm a Canadian. I'm Japanese. I'm Chinese. I'm this idol. I'm that idol. I only am in this country. I'm that country. What country do you represent? What country do you worship? What country do you do this? Right? You know what my flag is? My flag is the earth. Right? What is my religion? Taking care of the earth. As we're designed to do. That was the plan. Take care of the earth. Help people out, right? Help people um, remember who they are. Help people to get out of bondage because their soul's in bondage with all these contracts of spirits because people have been invoking spirits for thousands and thousands of years, not understanding what spells are, not understanding what prayers are, not understanding what a god is, a mist, a spirit. <laughs> You know, man, it just, it, it blows my mind. And it's a mind, it's, you're going to have to reprogram yourself to, to identify this stuff, right? This reprograms you into what a belief is. And you have to get out of belief because you're being deceived. You're being lied to constantly because of a, a program belief with a book that isn't even translated correctly. Because it's not teaching you that that book is teaching you about spirits invoking the product of exchange, sacrifice, right? Get rid of the word sacrifice. It's the product of exchange. What are you exchanging for this spirit? Oh, the Holy Spirit consumes me. What are you exchanging for the spirits that come in and out of you, right? Uh, what spell are you putting out there? Prayer. What pr are you praying out there? Oh, God, help me. Right? Well, if you want God to help you, what are you exchanging? What are you sacrificing? You're playing with spirits. It's nothing bad. It's just you need to be aware of what we're being taught. All right? Oh, it's pagan. No. A country dweller. Right? That's what a pagan is. A country dweller. It's different cultures from different countries with different flags and different states of a mindset, right? But we have to come together as a whole 
humanity has to come together as a whole, understand we've been playing with spirits and just mingling with spirits and rebellious spirits and spirits that have taken over, aligning to people, making people hurt themselves, right? Because people have been playing with magic spells for thousands of years because they don't understand, right? People became desperate because this world went through a flood, right? People became desperate. We need food. We need shelter. How do we take care of ourselves? Oh, hey. Oh, we need to pray to to the Elohims. We need to pray to the Anunnakis. We need to pray to the gods. Open the stars to give us um, food and shelter. People were starving. Right? And I think that was the problem. It's because the reset with the with the flood, then we had the mud flood, right? People were dying. And they were desperate. And because of the ancient ancestors, the elders, some of them did evil things, taught people these things. How to invoke in spirits instead of taking care of the lands. Because eventually, we were able to grow food and things established itself, right? Look into Noah's Ark, and maybe that's what happened. You know that things were seeded, but I I feel that people were underground at that time, and then they brought things up. So yeah, so very interesting, very fascinating. It's so important to understand these root words at the end of the day. Understand what you believe in. Understand your faith. Understand the stuff seems scary at first, but that's what we've been doing, right? Pay attention to what you say. Right? Because you're invoking something. You're saying a spell over and over again. Be like, oh, I can't get through this day today. That was a spell. Or, oh, hey, life is good. That's a spell. Right? Product of exchange. How can I keep my life good? Well, to keep your life good, you got to maintain your your life. You got to be responsible. You got to pay your bills. That's product of exchange. If you want to have a nice house, you got to pay your bills. Product of exchange. You're exchanging money, right? Man, it gets so deep. It gets so deep. So at the end of the day, you're a sovereign being. You can think for yourself, but don't let the whisper, the hissing, cloud your judgment from your heart, right? That's what Christ was all about. Get into your heart space. Christ said, go within yourself. Discover the kingdom of heaven. Go within yourself. Discover the creator within you. Christ was telling you this very same stuff that's presented here. Oh, don't follow that church over there. They're not teaching you the correct way on how to communicate with the creators. Don't read them books. Then spells. They'll bind you with their spirits, right? The dividing state. With their spirits, they will divide you. Their title will divide you. We're all equally and wonderfully made, right? Equally and wonderfully made. And we've forgotten that. We're sovereign beings. We are a soul in this vehicle experiencing life. It's so much more to it. So much more. So I'm going to go ahead and end on that. Uh, 48 minutes in. So hopefully you learned something from this. Um, hopefully this doesn't scare you. You can forward back and forth through this video. And learn. Absorb the information that was here. Because there's a lot of information. A lot of information. Some people. Their minds are probably blown away. Thank you for sticking around. To the end. Um, because it's important to understand this stuff and to identify it, right? You're a sovereign being. Learn how to be one, right? Be self-sufficient. Um, think for yourself. Um, man, there's just so much. Um, at the end of the day, we got to unite as the world. The world needs to learn how to unite. The people need to learn how to unite. Um, because that was the plan all along, right? The word, the plan, that was the reason 
all along. Powerful stuff, man. I could go on forever. So love yourself. Keep shining bright. And I'll be presenting more uh, presentations in the future as well. So, yeah. So, all right. Until then, have a good one.